Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, I hope everybody is well and everybody is taking very good care of themselves. Um, let's have a little bit of a, a recap. Uh, in the last lecture, we actually discussed uh, the segmentation uh, as well as uh, the target market, and we actually saw that uh, uh, we, we took an example of two uh, two projects that you people are doing, which is EEGBS wheelchair, as well as uh, the security ba uh, biometric based security system, right? So um, we saw that uh, what are the possible segmentations and the target market uh, for. Um, your product and the service, uh, whatever you are de developing. Um, uh, today, what we are going to do is we are going to actually see uh, the differentiation as well as uh, the positioning, uh, these two concepts, uh, where the differentiation actually uh, um, is uh, basically and the positioning that actually gives the value pro uh, proposition to the customers. Now, differentiation it actually depends upon uh, your product or the service that you're offering, that how much different it is from anything which is being currently offered uh, in the market. So uh, what you need to do is you need to actually study um, uh, the, your competitors uh, very aggressively uh, so that you can actually create any sort of a difference uh, either in the service or in the product or uh, maybe anything that is um, you know, post sales services or maybe uh, maybe anything else anything innovative that you can actually come up with right and, and then we're going to see uh, the positioning in this lecture that how uh, positioning effects uh, the basic um, uh, 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 the perception of the people and the belief of the people what are the belief and the perception of the people and how these beliefs and the perception of people actually uh, develop their positioning about the product or the service, right? And how can you actually deal with it? Uh, how can you incorporate these two things uh, if, along with the segmentation and the uh, uh, target market uh, to actually give <coughs> your customers uh, <coughs> uh, a certain value, right? So <coughs> let's first get with uh, differentiation. Now, uh, differentiation is basically something which actually um, is... Uh, a different differentiation is basically uh, that you offer which is actually different from anything which is currently being offered uh, in the market right so uh, most of the time uh, the differentiation is why people buy people buy because um, people actually want something different uh, which is uh, not being offered uh, currently to them in the market uh, so what you need to do is you need to actually see uh, that what are you offering uh, which is not currently being offered in the market right uh, among the competing brands the differences can be uh, physical or the perceptual right and uh, because of the physical properties and people may perceive uh, we'll see the perceptions and the physical uh, you know uh, positioning and the perceptual positioning over here uh, in, in, in the coming slides so uh, from there we, we're going to actually see that what is a physical uh, and the perceptual differentiation of how, where do the people actually perceive the things to be different uh, when, when it comes to the physical entity and when it comes to uh, the perceptual entity, right? So the brand's positioning uh, seeks to create both physical and the perceptual differences using along all the elements of the marketing mix. So uh, let's actually this uh, leave this marketing mix for the uh, time being. Uh, we'll be discussing marketing mix uh, in the coming lectures. So let's actually first see the physical positioning. Now, what is actually physical positioning? Physical positioning is actually, uh, you know, um, the physical properties of the product or the service, uh, which uh, one is actually giving, um, uh, give, giving away along with the product. Uh, for example, uh, physical uh, properties of uh, it's actually written in physics, which is actually wrong. It is. It should be actually physical. Right, the physical properties of the product. For example, uh, mo most of the uh, mobile cameras they actually sell um, uh, with you know uh, high-end cameras uh, uh, with them. Uh, some of the cell phones actually they uh, market with you know a uh, high ROM size uh, or maybe uh, some high efficiency. Right, so uh, they actually give uh, what they are actually giving is they are actually positioning their product in the minds of 
uh, the people with something physical within their product. So when we actually come up with, we, we took this example of EEG-based wheelchair as well as uh, biometric uh, security system. I, I also remember that uh, uh, one of the project was EEG prosthetic arm, uh, if I'm not wrong. So <clears throat> uh, all these products, that you people are developing, uh, these products actually have to have anything physical, uh, a different, any physical difference which currently uh, possibly do not exist either, or if it exists, it should have some sort of an innovative uh, pattern embedded into it, so that actually it can actually make a, a create a difference and a certain position within the minds, physical position within the mind of minds of uh, uh, the customers, your potential customers, right? So uh, that is how your differentiation actually is linked with the positioning, because if you actually make something different in the market, uh, it will actually have an impact. Um, on the minds of the customer and the potential consumers uh, and it if, if you're offering something physically physically different this physical difference actually also makes a difference when we come to the perceptual uh, uh, positioning of the product right so this physical positioning and the difference that also affects the perception of a person and the belief of a person. You, you actually come up with the perceptual positioning. So the perceptual positioning focuses on the consumer's perception about the product or the service. So if you are offering something extraordinary, uh, 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 to the customers or, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, your potential customers, uh, they actually will act uh, think and they actually, they will actually form a certain belief about uh, that product, that this product is offering us an extra feature of X, Y, Z, right? And that is the reason why people actually, uh, uh, you know, compare uh, one product with another product when they actually perceive one product to be uh, at the higher end and uh, the other product to be at the lower end. Uh, we actually did a very good exercise in the class uh, before um, uh, uh, before this lecture uh, about uh, the Honda City and the Suzuki Sias and Toyota Corolla uh, in Pakistan. So we did a, a comparative analysis, a complete comparative analysis. Uh, similarly, when we actually, you know, uh, 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 people, people, when we, pe when the people compare. Uh, Compare this Honda City and the Suzuki Sias or Toyota Corolla or any other car by, by all means, right? So uh, what they are doing is they are actually using their perceptual beliefs. Uh, they they have a certain belief system about a certain entity or a certain product, and they actually emphasize on buying, uh, or they actually uh, <clears throat> they actually um, talk about either one of the physical properties or you know the perceptions that they have. Uh, already with them about that product. Uh, same is the case with the Howdy's versus Subway. So what you need to do is uh, that when you are actually developing a certain product, you need to actually differentiate in such a way that it can actually show the physical properties so that it, it can change the belief system or the perceptions of the customer. So let's see how does a perception come into play. Right. So how does one perception or the belief can change the attitude? There are two things which actually, uh, you know, um, can change the perception of the people. One is the product itself. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, when, when you see a product, when you actually go through a product and when you see the properties of a certain product, you actually make up a mind that whether you want to buy that product or not. The second way through which you can actually form the perception is actually word of mouth or that is a normative belief or that is uh, something which usually is being talked about around you around your society right within your uh, with, within your you know inner circle so uh, if the inner circle has a strong word about a certain product um, you would definitely have a strong perception and a strong belief about that product right uh, for example if uh, uh, taking an example of this uh, uh, you know honda uh, city and uh, toyota and uh, this is suzuki cs uh, as a matter of fact um, if you 
if you are living in a certain inner circle where Honda is preferred as a car, you would certainly have a stronger belief about Honda, right? Um, uh, but if you are having uh, a certain belief about Toyota you know, in your uh, inner, inner circle, obviously you're going to actually prefer uh, uh, Toyota over Honda. So uh, this is the word of mouth. We usually call it a word of mouth. And the word of mouth actually uh, comes out of your friends, family members, or maybe anybody closer to you, right? So that actually forms the perception. So, so one thing is uh, uh, for sure that you create a difference in your product or service. Then you actually, and within that uh, differentiation, you actually offer something physical change and physical property which actually is not being offered uh, in 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 any of the other products or service, and that physical property actually becomes the physical perception or uh, uh, physical uh, positioning uh, of a customer uh, to the potential customer. When you go to the customer, you talk about that physical property uh, with your customer, and uh, that actually becomes your physical perception and that physical perception uh, sorry physical positioning and then physical positioning actually also plays a role as we talk about the perceptual positioning right so <clears throat> this is the basic concept of your uh, positioning uh, your physical positioning and your perceptual positioning right Okay, let's move onwards. Uh, so in order to actually create a perception, uh, uh, a positioning, what we usually do is that we actually create a positioning map. Uh, now, when we talk about the positioning map, a positioning map is usually between, uh, you know, a certain, um, uh, certain uh, properties. Uh, for example, uh, you take uh, two two uh, uh, different properties of a certain product, and uh, or two different factors about the product, and then you compare uh, between both, right? So um, before going to that, we'll see that the perception and the belief uh, is basically about the value, weight, valuation, integration, and response, right? So the value is basically the favorable and unfavorable evaluation of a bit of information uh, that you have about the product. Uh, and then what you do is that you actually use that information to actually weigh uh, that product that how much weight does that information carry. And valuation is the value and the weight on information uh, derived from the various source with respect to the multiple stimuli. Now these stimuli may be actually the physical touch, or it may be uh, the stimulus of seeing uh, something visibly. Um, uh, this can be uh, the stimulus of, you know, um, uh, of any of the response from your family members about it uh, through word of mouth, right? Uh, and then another one is basically the integration, which is mixing or combining the new information with existing information into one psychological response, uh, which actually gives, uh, you know, uh, you, you combine all the information that you have uh, and you weigh all the information and then you integrate it. And then you eventually make response. Now this response is basically the translation of the impression of the integration into the overall observable response, which actually means either you are going to buy the product or you are not going to buy the product, right? So you, what you can do is, uh, this, this thing you usually do when you do go for the window shopping, right? So what you do is you go, just for example, you go to a shop, uh, and you see a product, right? You touch the product or maybe you, you know, uh, 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 you, you simply see it on uh, the shelf, okay? right? So you see it on the shelf, then you make up your mind that what it is, right? And then you actually give it some value, right? And then you combine all these three things together over here, and then you actually respond whether you want to buy it or not, right? So it's actually one of the uh, sequential process that you actually have uh, when you are actually shopping something or when you are buying something. So any of the customer who actually wants to buy something, he actually or she actually goes through this certain process. So if 
if you have this process in your mind while you're developing something for the customer right so uh, i believe that you can you you can easily change the perception of the people by either actually through the physical properties of the uh, of the product or maybe you know the perception developing the perception of the people through this physical properties of the uh, of the product right um, generally this attitude and the belief of the customer comes through uh, uh, we already discussed it comes through um, uh, uh, through seeing the product or either through the word of mouth so these are the two equations which actually um, uh, are used uh, for uh, developing the perception and the belief of the uh, uh, belief of the customers now this has been actually taken uh, through uh, from um, uh, the theory uh, the theory of planned behavior now this theory of planned behavior actually is also been given in one of your assignments right where we actually talk about the perceptions and the entrepreneurial intention and all that right so um, these are the basic perceptions that you actually uh, uh, basic theory uh, about the perception and this is basically Eisen's theory right theory of planned behavior and according to that uh, according to this uh, these equations um, a naught is the attitude of the object uh, uh, towards the object b is actually the belief this B is actually the belief towards the object. E is the evaluation act of attribute of an object. For example, if you actually see a certain object, right? Um, uh, there, oh, sorry. Uh, if there is an object, if this, there is a certain object, uh, which is actually B, um, and you actually have evaluated uh, that certain object, uh, both of these will be the product right and this product is the product of this belief and the evaluation is actually going to determine the attitude right so this is only one attitude of one individual right so this n is the total number of beliefs right so uh, a naught is basically the attitude so when we actually have a product of the belief towards an object and the evaluation of uh, attributes of an object, uh, that certain object that you've actually uh, uh, seen uh, and uh, uh, you have a certain belief about it, right? So the product of that actually is going to give you the attitude. And the second equation, we actually have a norm. Norm is just as uh, anything that you do um, as, as per the routine, right? So it actually is the normative belief and the reference from the sources. See what I did to tell you that these are the reference for these are the this is the word of mouth. These are the reference from the sources that you actually get from either from your uh, friends or the family members, anybody close. So this, the product of uh, your normative belief that you have and the sources that you had been telling, both of these actually have a product, right? So the product of both of these actually creates your normative belief, your norms, okay? So... <clears throat> Once we are done with this, the attitude and the norm, both of these play an important role in developing a certain perception and a belief, right? So um, I believe this is clear enough that uh, how do the perceptions and the belief system work uh, for the customers? So it's, it's, it's imperative that you have to... Uh, develop a positive perception and a positive belief about your product and the positive perception the belief the sequence to that we already discussed it starting from the differentiation to all the way towards the positioning right so these two factors play an important role a very pivotal role in positioning the product in the minds of the customers right okay so when we are talking about uh, the positioning uh, and we also uh, discussed uh, uh, um, uh, a little bit that <clears throat> in order to uh, see the positioning, we prepare, uh, we make a positioning map, 
right? So in order to make a positioning map, uh, what we need to do is we need to select uh, either of the two factors, right? So what we do is, I mean, these are the steps uh, through uh, step one, step two, there are total four steps in which we actually develop a positioning map. We prepare the positioning map. Now, in the first step, we identify the relevant set of competitive products. What we want to, which products do we want to have? So in our case, I circulated yesterday um, a questionnaire amongst your class as well as the faculty members of EE department. Uh, in that questionnaire, there were certain products um, and they were the mostly actually included eateries. Uh, for example, KFC was there and McDonald's were there, right? Uh, what was another one? Uh, that was simply Sufi was there, um, then Hardee's was there, right? Uh, uh, and what else was there? I think Subway was there as well. Right? And just wanted to have a little bit of a perception from you people that where do you perceive these products actually lie on the chart, right? So um, what I did was I selected all six of these, I think six or five of these uh, products. We'll see the results actually are embedded in this presentation and we're going to discuss that uh, those results very soon, right? So uh, step one is to identify the relevant set of uh, competitive products. Uh, the second step is to identify the determin uh, determinant attributes uh, that uh, the, the attributes that generally the products have, right? Uh, for example, in our case, uh, it was actually the price and uh, the quality, uh, which is just over here. Right, whether 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 uh, the product is economical or how is it actually the quality wise, other maybe the benefits and the features, uh, parentage, manufacturing process, ingredients, endorsements. You can you can do anything. Uh, you can actually compare any of the product and the perceptions of the perce perceptual mapping of any of the product uh, using any of you know uh, the attributes. Uh, the third step. Uh, is to collect the data about the customers um, uh, the way I did it uh, uh, from you uh, as seeing uh, proceeding to the fourth step which is basically analyzing the data uh, and what I did was that uh, when I collected the data uh, there were like two set of questions for each uh, product uh, uh, one question for each attribute uh, from you people uh, there can be more questions uh, uh, against each attribute as well uh, and what I did was was that I measured uh, the quality as well as the uh, as well as the price. Um, I measured this quality um, at the scale of five. Oops, that's not five. At the scale of five, and uh, as far as the um, product is uh, the the price is concerned, it was on the scale of three, I believe. Uh, so what I did was that I calculated the mean all of, of all of that, right? So, and I presented the data. Uh, now, what, what initially happens is that when you actually prepare a, a map, when you prepare a, a, a perceptual, uh, this positioning map, so what you do is you actually prepare a four quadrant. For example, high quality towards the low quality uh, and your high price and the low price and the high quality and the low quality. So these are the four quadrants. In those four quadrants, what you do is you actually fit in all the brands that you have. So according to this uh, 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 perceptual positioning map, uh, <clears throat> the different chocolates have been uh, uh, compared. Uh, and if you see that this, this brand over here is positioned as quite expensive as well as quite uh, got of a high quality and uh, then this brand then this dairy milk and the galaxy are actually of low price but generally they have galaxy is an average quality and you know uh, this is uh, dairy milk is you know it's it's a uh, uh, little bit of a uh, high quality and the Twix is absolutely a low price but an average quality along with the Kit Kat so they actually are positioned whereas um, what's odd over here is that 
this thing over here has um, an average, more or less an average price, right? Uh, but it is absolutely a low quality, right? So uh, this is this is this is basically an analysis of the perceptual mapping uh, of the customers. Similarly, uh, if we go over here. We actually can see uh, that different there are different brands over here of the cars, right? So uh, these brands are actually mapped, uh, perceptually mapped, uh, against the pre 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 prestigious to own and the financial effectiveness, right? Uh, which is actually over here and over here, right? So uh, it's from high to low and high to low, right? So um, if we actually assess this, then Mercedes is absolutely highly prestigious and financially also, it actually is high uh, towards higher end than the BMW and Mitsubishi, right? Mitsubishi is a little lower in, as far as the financial effectiveness is concerned, uh, but equally prestigious, right? Uh, Audi is over here. Uh, which usually Pakistanis really prefer, um, right? So, and then there is Honda. Uh, and uh, let me tell you one thing. These perceptual maps are not from, um, uh, not from Pakistan, and they actually may vary from region to region, right? Because the perception of the people uh, geographically can vary, right? And demographically also that can vary. Um, so, uh, Within the segmentation, uh, uh, various type of segmentation, perceptual uh, uh, segmentation, as well as the demographic segmentation, as well as um, your geographic segmentation, uh, the, the the this positioning may vary, right? So it's not necessary that you may actually get the same sort of positioning over here in Pakistan. <clears throat> so uh, moving next. Um, this is the result that we actually had uh, for our branch, um, the data that I collected from you people and the electrical engineering department faculty. Now, uh, although it, this, this data was actually only, um, it's just a sample because it's the result of 40, 41 uh, uh, responses. Uh, what we can actually see is we had actually um, six brands uh, in total, or five or six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six brands in total. Uh, and we wanted to have a little bit of a, you know, um, a price versus quality comparison. Uh, and we can actually see over here uh, that out of that 41 responses, uh, Simply Sufi is actually, if, uh, you people have actually uh, responded with the, your perception that it has actually, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, you have uh, uh, um, simply Sufi is actually of the low quality, uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, it also is um, not the price is average. I would say it's not expensive. It's not a little cheaper, but it's more towards the expensive. But it's it's barely on the line, right? So um, then it is. As compared to the rest of the products, uh, the second one is actually Hardee's. Hardee's is, you have actually given it quite a high quality as well as it is expensive, right? So, um, okay, that is more expensive than Sufi though, uh, but very high quality, right? So that is sort of a win-win situation when if you go out and, you know, uh, want to have something. Um, then on average, um, these four are actually the competitors clearly, right? Uh, the Conehead, KFC, McDonald's, and Subway. So Subway is, all, all of them are actually lying absolutely in the middle. Although this sample size is, you know, uh, 41 uh, sample is quite less, but just wanted to actually show you that how the things can actually be mapped uh, when you actually um, respond, you being a customer, when you're responding to the rest of the, uh, you know, uh, rest of the brands, uh, uh, how, how, how can you actually map all of them together? So uh, KFC is over here. Uh, McDonald is ideally speaking is, you know, very economical and Subway is a little expensive um, than uh, your McDonald because this is McDonald, I believe, uh, right? Uh, and Subway is a little expensive, uh, whereas Coneheads is a little far 
away from you know uh, this uh, KFC as well as the McDonald's and Subway. It's just a little behind. It's a little low quality and it's you know on absolutely an average price. Uh, absolutely an average price. Okay, uh, so I believe now it is clear that how actually we go for uh, uh, your differentiation and positioning and, you know, uh, what are the physical positionings and the perceptual positionings, how can we actually create, what are the beliefs and the perceptions of the people and how can those beliefs and the perception of the people can change, um, you know, uh, change the whole game. And you, how you have to actually develop uh, these perception and uh, you know uh, belief. How, how can you can you can change them uh, uh, either through providing them something physical, uh, or maybe uh, you can actually uh, talk to them and you can advertise them. You can market your product much better, uh, so that they can actually buy the, so that they can they can change their belief and the perception about your product and buy your product. Right? Okay, <clears throat> let's move onwards. So uh, when we talk about um, uh, the differences and uh, the f uh, you know uh, the positioning of the product, um, why are we actually doing all this? We are actually doing it so that we can actually provide our customer with a certain value, right? Uh, we can give them a value-added feature or uh, some some something different uh, that they can actually use, right? So that they can actually value your product. Uh, that is the reason why we are actually differentiating it and that is the reason why we are talking about the perceptions and the beliefs of the people so that they can actually uh, feel the difference, right? So uh, when we talk about the values and the difference in the competitive advantages, uh, there are actually five uh, different uh, lines, right? Um, through in which you can actually differentiate and position through your product uh, somehow or the other, right? Um, and <clears throat> these five different lines, which is actually the product, services, channels, people, and image. Um, these five uh, uh, lines or the f these five factors or the f these five dimensions actually uh, help you in developing the certain position of the product. And it can also help you in providing a certain differentiation. For example, when we talk about the product, now both these products in this image actually offers entirely different uh, thing. For example, Subway actually gives you the, uh, you know, uh, something, something different from the normal uh, uh, burgers uh, or the normal like McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's doesn't offer you any sort of a sandwich. So what they deal is in the sandwich. Right. Similarly, over here, uh, this is this is the car which is India's most uh, fuel efficient petrol car, uh, which is probably uh, Tata Nano, probably, right? So which uh, I don't know, um, whether uh, it's still uh, there or not. Uh, <clears throat> but at, at times, the Tata actually offered this Nano. Um, similarly, uh, this. Uh, the product differentiation um, mostly in uh, these kind of uh, product lines uh, that actually gives you the better performance or the style or the design or you know it tastes different uh, just like your subway it actually tastes a lot different uh, than the normal burgers that you have at McDonald's and the KFC. Now KFC has their own uh, a speciality about uh, the chicken uh, and uh, McDonald has a different taste so everybody has their own recipe so that one difference uh, that actually brings in you know uh, a certain uh, a certain change or this difference giving you a competitive edge in the market right so uh, the second one is actually the service uh, the service differentiation is basically uh, the difference where you can actually give look a product is something different right a product is something physical and uh, the service is not physical it's actually tangible it's it's not tangible it's it's um what you can do is you can actually in within a service you can actually provide the service more quickly right 
um, more conveniently uh, and uh, more carefully. Now, when you talk about the after uh, uh, customer services, after sales services, that also service that service actually really counts, uh, and that service has to be different from the other services. If one of the product is giving a service uh, after sales service as conveniently and as quickly as possible obviously that is going to actually affect the overall product consumption as well right but when we talk about the service uh, differentiation categorically because it's not necessarily you're offering a product you may offer the service as well so uh, when we talk about the services uh, the service differentiation is basically about the speedy uh, speediness convenience and uh, careful delivery so um, uh, for example uh, if over here, what we have seen is the first convenience bank. Why first convenience bank can actually uh, be uh, differentiated from the rest of the banks? Maybe based upon uh, the services that they're offered, the online services that that they're offering, uh, and maybe it's uh, the sort of uh, the loans that they're offering. It's maybe you know uh, how quickly you can go into the bank and get the things done. Uh, uh, sort of a thing uh, that can be one of the basic difference. So that is one of the difference that you can actually create. Uh, and this difference can actually uh, create a certain position and the perception and the belief uh, within the minds of the customer. Uh, similarly, uh, when we talk about uh, the channel differentiation, now the channel differentiation is basically about the channel coverage and the expertise and the performance. Now, not necessarily TCS and Amazon, is they do actually give a perfect uh, uh, channel to everyone. Uh, TCS is everywhere. Amazon gives you, except Pakistan, Amazon is not in Pakistan, but UK, US and the rest of the world, I believe in India as well. Um, uh, uh, the the you you have Amazon over there as well, but not in Pakistan. Uh, so when we talk about the TCS and the Amazon, uh, <clears throat> they actually give you a certain difference in the channel because uh, they have really channelized everything, uh, uh, which which you expect uh, them to do, right? Um, they have all the means to actually deliver your package anywhere you want within Pakistan or maybe Amazon when you're talking about Amazon anywhere in the world right so <clears throat> That is where your channel differentiation comes in. And now this channel differentiation also comes in when you come to the manufacturing. Uh, if you actually talk about the supply chain, um, if you talk about the supply of the product within uh, the market as well, like, for example, uh, Nestle uh, Water, Pure Life, uh, it is to be found everywhere in the market. Right. Uh, as far as the aqua is concerned or any of the of the other uh, water is concerned, if you don't find any of the water at every store, wherever you go, then expect this thing that they do have a problem with the channel. Right. So they cannot actually uh, pass on uh, the product to uh, the market as quickly as possible. Um, as it has been consumed, right? Um, then the fourth one is actually the people differentiation. Now the people differentiation, most of it actually depends upon the people themselves, that how the people have been trained, how the people have been hired, how, um, because when we talk about the people, so if we just switch back, um, to the service differentiation, to the channel differentiation, to the people. And people differentiation really counts a lot, right? Um, and it's mostly about the people themselves. Uh, the highly skilled and the highly trained people would actually really make a difference, especially in the services, especially in the product. So the highly skilled people you have in uh, the product line uh, and the manufacturing line, the better products they are going to actually prepare. Uh, the highly skilled people you have in the services, uh, the more swift and the more better services that they are going to provide to their customers eventually giving the company or the business a competitive edge so it totally depends that how really you really want to differentiate so you want to differentiate on the product you really want to differentiate on the service you really want to differentiate on the channel you really want to differentiate on the people by the way all these four kind of differentiations actually 
can be combined and in fact the fifth differentiation can also be combined which is the image differentiation which is actually the perception of the people because these four uh, uh, differentiations is a product differentiation service differentiation um, your channel differentiation and your people differentiation uh, they all actually form your image the perception the belief about the product like the McDonald has, the Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, um, KFC. Oh, wow. Guess what? <laughs> what do we have here? We actually have Corona Extra over here as well, right? So, <laughs> uh, because we are actually having uh, the holidays because of that, right? Uh, the coronavirus. Now, um, <clears throat> when we talk about, uh, you know, um, uh, the image, so the image is actually formed from all of these five, right? Okay, done. Uh, next thing is choosing the right competitive advantage. It can be actually um, how to how to gain the competitive advantage, right? Um, the competitive advantage can be gained uh, when you are offering something new, right? When you have a unique selling proposition, uh, when you tell people that this is something important that you're offering, which is not being offered currently by anyone, which is distinctive, which is superior. And we have all discussed it before, right? So uh, this is where your competitive advantage comes in. Uh, you need to communicate to the people. You need to actually be more perceptive, um, af affordable to the people. Again, uh, in the last lecture, I actually discussed that what sort of the capitals would you require if you are actually offering uh, a niche market or a mass market uh, or what sort of the you know price that you're going to offer when you're offering it to the mass market or you know uh, uh, the niche market. So uh, when we actually see uh, the overall positioning, um, and then we see that uh, in the benefits and the price, uh, when we talk about uh, this sort of a chart, um, when we actually see this, this is actually your win-win situation, which is more for less, right? And for the less for less is absolutely not a win-win situation. It's basically the losing value proposition. So when you are giving your customers with lesser amount of the price, with a higher number of benefits, right? So that is where you actually get the perfect win-win situation and the customer is going to come to you and customer is going to actually buy your product. If your product is really worth it, you have to create a value in that product. And that is exactly what we actually discussed in past two lectures, this lecture and the previous lecture. And that is number one, you need to actually identify the segment that you are going to sell the product. Second, you need to actually target uh, that particular segment within that segment. You need to actually target the customers. That what what sort of the target, uh, what sort of the customers do you require, and what differentiated product are you going to offer to your customers? Right. Uh, this differentiation and the belief system of the people. Uh, we just discussed how actually differentiation comes up with the positioning, right? So uh, the differentiation and the positioning can actually give you a perfect combination and provide this value to your customers. If you are going to give the best uh, value, um, whether it's uh, your biometric based um, or the security system or it's, it's uh, your... Um, uh, EEG based, you know, uh, wheelchair or a prosthetic arm or any other product. You just just keep in this thing in mind that the difference, the customer needs the difference, right? And that difference is actually going to come here. Um, you need to position it, right? Uh, in a certain segment of the target, right? So that this whole thing is going to actually give customer or the segment that you are targeting a certain value, right? So I hope that uh, this complete section is clear now. Uh, if you have any queries, if you have any questions, um, please um, either uh, comment um, in the YouTube uh, video below or uh, you can. what you can do is you can actually WhatsApp me um, on my number 
you can uh, call me if you want to um, the, all the channels are there uh, but please remember remember this you have to go through the prescribed section that we have actually suggested you go through the book go through the literature go through everything you have go through the literature on the web you should not rely on only one book or just the slides i'm not giving away the slides like this right so you go through everything what we're going to do is we're going to have a quiz next week friday right till that till next time till next video we'll i'll see you in the next video right okay allah hafiz and bye bye